Hi all, this is Pragya Shvastava, an educator on Unacademy. Follow me on Unacademy Learning App and find my many more courses. And in this lesson, we will be studying about trap footing. A strap footing consists of two spread footings joined by a rigid beam known as strap. The strap is not subjected to any direct soil pressure from below, neither it remains in contact with soil. And the main function of a strap is just to transfer the moment from the exterior footing to the interior footing. A strap footing is required when x is x dash is less than l upon 3. What is x dash? x dash is the distance of resultant of the column loads from exterior phase of exterior column. I will show you in the figure. Wait for a moment and L is the length of your footing. And a strap footing is also needed when distance between the two columns is so large that a combined footing becomes too long and narrow. So I have drawn a strap footing here. What you can see here is this one is your footing base. Two columns are there carrying a load of Q1 and Q2. And this portion that is actually connecting the two columns is your strap and below this level there is soil so you can easily see that there is a gap between the soil and your strap that means your strap is not in contact with your soil mass and let us see some assumptions that is actually made in designing a strap footing. It says that the soil pressure is taken to be uniform beneath each individual footing. Second one, the strap is perfectly rigid. Strap is weightless. The interior footing is centrally loaded. You can see this is the interior footing and it is assumed to be centrally loaded. Now let's see how we are going to design a strap footing. It is actually done by a hit and trial method you can say because the first thing we do is we assume the value of eccentricity e it is not given and not known what is e let's see here this portion is i am referring to as e it starts from the center line of the load that is actually acting on exterior column this column is said to be exterior column and this one is your interior column and this one is your footing uh, this shows you the pressure that is actually exerted on the footing which is assumed to be uniform and below this footing this is the pressure that is actually being exerted here and this is again assumed to be uniform and the soil is actually giving a resistance force R1 here and resistance force R2 here. And we have assumed the uh, this distance between the center of the 
load that is actually acting and the resistance force that may be acting on your footing from the soil this distance is actually your eccentricity e and this value is assumed to by us from there we start our calculation work with that e we will try to find out the length and width and then check for bending moment and shear moment and the say if our foundation is safe or not and again we will assume some other values of e and check for it so it's a hit and trial method now the after assuming e the second thing that you need to do is to find the length of the footing of exterior column length of footing of exterior column that is l1 very interesting finding out this length l1 and says that l1 is actually equal to 2 times e plus 0.5 b1 where b1 is this one the dimension of this uh, column and 0.5 b1 multiplied by 2 makes this b1 plus 2 times e that this makes the length l1 this much uh, length must be provided to your footing so by assuming e we can first of all we can find the value of this footing that is l1 knowing the value of l1 we'll compute the reaction r reaction r can be find out you can find out by taking moments I am taking here moments at R2. This is your reaction force. I am taking the moment of moment over here. So what you get? R1 cross this distance S. Here R1 force into distance should be equal to Q1, the vertical load, multiplied by what? Its distance to R2. That means this is x2. So from there you get the value of reaction R1 is equal to Q1 into x2 divided by S. Now next work to find out the area. Areas A1 and A2 of your footing. The area that need to be provided is actually equal to this reaction force by the allowable net allowable bearing capacity of the soil and similar way you can find out area a2 is actually equal to r2 upon q n a now find the width of the footing this fit b1 and b2 how we are going to find it out b1 is actually equal to a1 area upon length and b2 is equal to under root a2 being a square footing now determine the length of strap for diagonal shear and bending moment this is the total working of your uh, strap footing let's try to solve a problem then it will be more clear to us how we are going to actually design a strap footing just put that in your mind that we need to find out the dimension of your footing and will then draw the bend from the pressure diagram calculate the total pressure that may be acting and then draw a pressure diagram from there draw a shear force diagram and draw a bending moment diagram and then you can decide the length or the reinforcements that may be needed now here is a question it says that design is trap footing for column shown allowable soil pressure is equal to 100 kilo newton per meter square given to you and again the eccentricity of the footing is actually one meter and it, this portion is actually given to you you don't need to assume this this is your column load is actually known to you q1 is equal to 600 kilo newton acting on it and this load q2 is actually given to be equal to 1000 kilo newton acting on the second column 
and 0 0.4 cross 0 0.4 is the dimension of your footing and the distance between the loads is given to be 6 meter. Now, let us start doing our work. First, our job is to find out this length L. Being known the value of E is equal to 1 given. Length of exterior column is actually equal to L1 is equal to 2E plus 0.5B1. Directly put the values. We know the value of E1 and 0.5 multiplied by we know the value uh, the dimension of your column 0.4B1 is the width of the column. So, from where there you can get the value of L1. It was found out to be equal to 2.4 meter. Now, let us try to calculate the reactions. Reactions Q1 X2 upon S. Directly put the values here. Taking this uh, from where we get this relation by taking moment at R2. If you do not remember the formula, then also you can find out uh, this is R2. And what we are going to do? R1 multiplied by this distance. Is, should be equal to Q1 multiplied by this distance. This is what you are going to do here. Q1 x2 upon s. You will get 600 into 6 upon 5. Comes out to be 720 kilo Newton. And this R2. R2 is the total load coming minus R1. For equilibrium purpose, the total vertical load should be equal to total reaction forces. So, your R2 is known to you. Q1 plus Q2 that means 600 plus 1000 minus R1. R1 what is R1? 720. You get your value as 880. Now what? After knowing the reaction forces and length, you can easily find out the area of the footing. Area R1 upon QNA, QNA is given in the question, it is 100, the bearing capacity of the soil is 100 and R1 comes out to be 720. So, 720 divided by 100 is going to be give you the area of your footing, that means 7.2 meter square and in a similar fashion you can find out the area for the second footing, that means 880 divided by 100 comes out to be 8.8 meter square. Now, Knowing the area, we can find out the width. Width is actually nothing but area upon length. So, 7.2 divided by what is length? 2.4. This is what we got. The length L1 comes out to be 3. And the width B2, assuming it to be a square footing, 8.8 .8 under root comes out to be 2.96 which I am approxim approximating it to be equal to 3 meter. So, we have the intensity of pressure we can find out intensity of pressure that means Q1 is actually equal to 100 multiplied by width 3 comes out to be 300 kilo Newton per meter and this Q2 is coming out to be equal to 880 divided by 3 cross 3. Uh, when you calculate, you will get, I am multiplying it by 3 because we want the intensity of pressure in terms of kilo Newton per meter unit. So, it comes out to be 293.4 kilo Newton per meter. This is the total pressure that is actually acting here. This is what I have written. The pressure that is acting on this footing is actually 293.4 kilo Newton per meter. And the pressure that is actually acting on this footing is 300 kilo Newton per meter. Based on this, what you need to do? Find out SFD, BMD and find the maximum moment to check for the safety of your structure. Now, Try to solve it on your own and have a nice day.